Hello everyone, happy morning, a very good morning. I hope and I believe all of you are doing well. A uh, quick nod whether the audio visual is all good. Hi, happy, happy morning, everyone. So today we have NF100 episode 62, where we are going to decode the topic of aphasia, what is motor, sensory, transcortical aphasia, conduction aphasia, right? All of that is what we are going to decode. And if time permits, we are also going to see the Broadman areas, right? The Broadman areas. Then uh, today, 4 p.m., we have the next class. The next that we are meeting is at 4 p.m., where we have the mnemonics crash course that is going on for last minute revision. So, everybody who has uh, read a lot or anybody who's starting afresh, all of you can attend this. And the mnemonics crash course, uh, FMT, is what is the subject that we are going to discuss today. Okay. <coughs> Uh, what happened, Sangeeta? See, don't take your, uh, uh, you know, the GT scores and the GT ranks as like, you know, your final exam scores and ranks. Your GTs are just meant to give you a direction to help you realize your mistakes well before the exam and to work on that. It's not meant, uh, uh, you know, to demotivate you. So take it in a positive stride and try to learn, uh, you know, from it and move forward. Okay. Yes, Nishu, it is at 4 p.m. today. Okay, it's at 4 p.m. today. This is a crash course on mnemonics that we have started from April 20. Uh, we have seen some mnemonics in uh, pharmacology, then microbiology, and today we are going to see some mnemonics in FMT. Okay, in FMT. Raj Lakshmi, which uh, PDF do you want? From 2nd of May, we will have the uh, plus course of mnemonics from 2nd to 13th of May. All right, and we have the next All India Mock Test, which is coming up on 1st of May at 9 a.m. Uh, you can use the code Dr. Nikita while you are enrolling for the same. All right, and uh, Sartak, for students entering final year, how frequently they should give a grand test? Final year, all students say the once a month, uh, once in two months is also good enough. Once a month is what I would say should be ideal. Uh, no, UC Medico, you have to take the plus subscription for the plus uh, sessions of mnemonics. Okay. Yes, the competition is high, but we are nevertheless, right? Don't underestimate yourself, uh, Nishu. And uh, Ipsita, see, don't correlate your hard work, the number of hours that you are studying to the marks that you would be receiving. You must have seen students for sure who don't study for long times, but they still score good. I think with hard work, what is also very important is the smart work. Okay, the smart work is also very, very important. So, uh, you know, there's no point or like it said, if you want to cut a tree and you are just hitting with the axe, but the axe does not have a sharp edge. There's no point for how many long hours do you hit the tree. Instead of that, if you sharpen the axe, you would be able to cut the tree very easily. So that sharpening the axe is what we need. And basically, as I say, it concepts and mnemonics two things in place and you can crack any exam, right? So I help you with both. We have the Fast 5 Clinical KBMD. We have the mnemonics crash course. So I think uh, you can do that. Sartak, yes, I know like, you know, your uh, name seems very familiar. Okay, uh, give me a minute. All right. Sartak is Dr. Doom. Okay, never knew that. Uh, then I know you very well. Okay. So, Unacademy Light, the subscription which is light on your pocket, the test CD subscription, MBBS Prof 1, so that your younger siblings can start, uh, you know, kickstart their MBBS journey right from the starting. And the previous year question bank, not to underestimate the importance of the PYQs in these last days, including FMG question bank is very, very important. And uh, then we have for FMG, the one month revision course starting on April 27th. 
right and whenever you are subscribing i'll be glad if you can use the code dr nikita that would give you additional discount okay uh kbmd should be back uh soon app pe wala kbmd wo bhi aa jayega theek hai okay so let's start with the topic of aphasia this is the table that we have to decode today so basically what is wernicke is broca's global conduction transcortical aphasia in which comprehension is affected in which repetition is affected in which naming is affected and in which fluency is affected or preserved that is what we need to know here okay that is what we need to know here so let's decode this table okay let's decode this table all right so tell me your uh, broca's area and the wernicke's area which is the motor area and which is the sensory area <laughs> this is what you can see what kaira has done let us take it down okay yes the pyq question bank is only for the plus users yes so in your uh, speech okay in the speech the motor speech area and the sensory speech area motor is basically your expressive one like when we speak what we speak we are expressing that is basically motor so motor is your uh, motor is your broca's area and sensory is basically the wernicke's area and where are they located where is broca's located and where is uh, wernicke's located i think yes you've seen the head shoulder knees and toes it was absolutely when i was seeing the video it was like we getting confused in the options ye mark karna hai ki ye mark karna hai which is the head and which is the shoulder you get totally confused right broca's is located where frontal parietal temporal occipital no ashwarya broca's is not superior temporal broca's is inferior frontal gyrus and wernicke's is superior temporal gyrus okay it's your superior temporal gyrus the trick to remember this is alphabetically when you say p q r s t u v w okay s t u v w so basically s t is your superior temporal and it is your wernicke's area right it is your wernicke's area for broca's alphabetically a b c d e f g h i so it is basically that b e f i coming together broca's is your expressive one it is frontal and it is inferior frontal gyrus right it's inferior frontal so always remember this very very important b e f i b e f i and s t u v w so superior temporal is wernicke's and broca's is expressive it is frontal wernicke's is sensory okay wernicke's is sensory s for sensory also okay s for sensory also all right remember that this also stands for sensory so sensory is wernicke's broca's is expressive or motor now what connects the broca's with the wernicke's what is that fasciculus which is connecting your broca's to the wernicke's areas what is that fasciculus called as it is called as arcuate fasciculus right it is called as arcuate fasciculus so how do we basically speak is when we hear something somebody is talking to us we uh, hear that we comprehend that and then uh, conduction and there is broca's which comes into play which expresses right so this when the broca's is affected it is called as broca's aphasia or the motor aphasia because it's a motor area when the wernicke's is affected it is wernicke's or the sensory aphasia and when the arcuate is affected it is the conduction pathway between broca's and wernicke's so it is called as conduction aphasia right so it is called as conduction aphasia so what is conduction aphasia the conduction between the broca's and the wernicke's is lost okay that is conduction aphasia in all of these aphasia you know basically when the broca's is affected or the wernicke's is affected or the conduction is affected this pathway is affected the common thing that you will see in these aphasias is 
repetition is affected okay the repetition is not preserved all right the repetition is not preserved in these aphasias the repetition is not preserved in which aphasias i'll come to the wernicke's area number and the broca's area ka broadman area number wernicke's is 22 okay i'll come to that uske baad mein ha um in which aphasia the repetition is preserved the repetition is normal that is your transcortical aphasia okay that's your transcortical so you have broca's you have wernicke's and they are connected to the other cortical areas so your transcortical aphasias are the ones where the repetition is normal okay where the repetition is normal all right in sub me the naming is affected in all of these the naming is impaired right where the naming is preserved i'll come to that table you know the table that we have seen here look at this naming wala okay the naming wala column in all of these the naming is affected where is the naming preserved only in pure word deafness and pure alexia i'll come to that again later on okay now you are we are looking at fluency repetition and the comprehension think logically and tell me in which aphasia the fluency would be affected in which one the fluency will be affected broca's or wernicke's fluency matlab expressing is affected expressing is basically your broca's right in which one the fluency is normal fluency is normal that means there's no problem in forming the words it is your sensory that is wernicke's so what is affected in wernicke which is sensory speech area the comprehension area it is the comprehension which is affected right the comprehension which is affected so the patient does not understand anything and keep saying anything irrelevant uh, you know uh, incomprehensible speech basically is what the patient will have all right so this is a uh, aphasia let me show you that table and look at this broca's wernicke's and the areas okay so this is basically what sulcus is this this is the central sulcus which separates your frontal from the parietal lobe what do you have in the precentral uh, precentral gyrus is it the motor area or is it the sensory area what is there in the pre and what is there in the post central area which is sensory and which is motor right remember that post p o s t post s is sensory area okay s is sensory and the motor is your pre pre central is your motor area which one is your uh, which one what is the broadman area for the sensory cortex the primary sensory cortex the post central gyrus what broadman area is it so before doing any activity that is a motor activity the first thing is we sense something and then we do the motor activity right so sensation comes once so basically your area 1 2 3 that is 3 1 2 that is sensory after that 4 and 6 that is your motor area okay the even numbers then 4 and 6 4 is primary motor 6 is your pre motor area okay pre motor area can someone tell me what uh, broadman area is the frontal eye field which controls the horizontal gaze the frontal eye field is what broadman area absolutely right it is your broadman's area 8 okay remember i eyes and you write number 8 when you write the number 8 horizontal right when you write it horizontal this is like the spectacle the eyes so this is the frontal eye field is your area 8 okay the frontal eye field remember is your area 8 broca speech area right this is the frontal area this is the inferior frontal this inferior frontal gyrus you can be asked a image based question right so this area is the broca's area because this is inferior frontal remember b e f i and remember f f that is 44 and 45 all f f that is your broca's area wernicke's now this one this lobe here is the temporal lobe 
superior temporal this is where we have the vernicase area remember temporal is your t t that is 22 okay that is 22 frontal brocas is all ff temporal is all t t that means it is 22 okay that means it is 22 vernicase is area 22 the next we have is the visual cortex visual matlab seen right visual matlab see in Remember SE that is 17. The primary visual cortex is 17. Okay, that is 17. Then you have 18, 19, which is the uh, which is the association cortex, and you have angular gyrus, which is Brodmann's area. Okay, which is Brodmann's area 39. What does the lesion of the angular gyrus leads to which syndrome? Angular gyrus lesion leads to which syndrome? In the dominant lobe, angular gyrus. That is Gerstmann syndrome. Okay, that is Gerstmann where there is right-left dissociation. Absolutely right. So, everybody is clear with this area. So, we have the motor, we have the sensory, frontal eye field, Broca's, Wernicke's, visual cortex, and we have the angular gyrus. Okay. Okay, that, that's uh, good, Sarthak. You can remember Wernicke's like this as well. Great. Now, coming to the types of aphasia, this is basically your aphasia box, the aphasia chart. Now, in this chart that you see, this line which is shown here, this is for repetition. This side of the aphasias would be poor repetition. This side of the aphasias would be good repetition. So, you can see which ones have the good repetition. It is all your transcortical aphasia. Okay, it's your transcortical. The first point to be remembered is your transcortical aphasias. The repetition is normal, right? The rest of that sensory conduction motor aphasia, there is poor repetition. Now the next one, which one has a non-fluent speech? Non-fluent matlab the motor area is affected. So it is your motor aphasia or it is your transcortical motor aphasia or it is your mixed transcortical that is both motor and sensory so this is the one basically where the fluency is affected so here the fluency is normal sensory and conduction the fluency is normal this is the one to this side to the left the comprehension is good in motor there's a problem in expressing the comprehension is normal in conduction, both is normal because Broca's and Wernicke's are not affected. It is just the conduction which is affected. So, only repetition is gone. So, if there is a question that in which aphasia only repetition is affected, it is your conduction aphasia, right? It's your conduction aphasia. Sensory aphasia, the comprehension is affected. The fluency is not affected because the motor area is not affected. Okay, now let's have a look at this table and one by one you will tell me what aphasia are these ones. Okay, so tell me the first aphasia where there is no fluency, no comprehension, no repetition. Everything is affected. What aphasia is that? See, fluency affected means the motor part is gone. Comprehension affected means the sensory part is gone. Repetition is also gone. Everything is affected. Everything is affected. That means... It is global aphasia. Global means everything gone. Next one, there is no fluency, there is no comprehension, but there is repetition which is preserved. What type of aphasia is it? There is no fluency, no comprehension, but the repetition is normal. Very good. Whenever you see that the repetition is normal, you should uh, also think of transcortical aphasia. What is it? Is it motor, sensory or mixed? Because both are affected fluency and comprehension. So this is a mixed. Raj Lakshmi, sensory, the fluency should be normal. Here both are affected. So this is mixed transcortical aphasia. Okay. Next one. Where you have fluency affected, repetition affected, but the comprehension is normal. Comprehension. That means the Wernicke's is normal. Fluency gone. That means Broca's gone. Fluency repetition gone. This is going to be Broca's aphasia or the motor aphasia. Right? Broca's or motor aphasia. Where you have there is no fluency. 
comprehension is there repetition is also there what type of aphasia is that i would say the first thing that you should see in your clinical questions of aphasia is the repetition because that helps you decide whether this is transcortical or this is not transcortical so repetition is there it's transcortical fluency is gone so it is transcortical motor aphasia right transcortical motor aphasia fluency is there comprehension is not there repetition is not there so this is not transcortical because repetition is gone comprehension is gone so this is sensory aphasia that is wernicke's aphasia repetition is there comprehension is not there and fluency is also there only the comprehension is gone repetition is there so this is transcortical sensory aphasia right because the repetition is there when you have repetition is not there the rest of the two are normal only repetition is affected the rest are normal repetition is your conduction so that is your conduction aphasia right conduction aphasia where everything is normal fluency comprehension repetition everything is normal it is only the naming which is abnormal that is called as anomic aphasia right that is called as anomic aphasia where only the naming is affected rest everything is normal right rest everything is normal give me a quick thumbs up if everybody is clear with this types of aphasia how will you decide what aphasia is that right a quick thumbs up so that we can go to few more mcqs amazing okay so this is the flow chart for the types of aphasia right not to go into this your table is good enough to uh, you know remember that where everything is affected it is global where everything is normal it is anomic it's only the naming which is affected in your conduction aphasia it's only the repetition which is abnormal that is what you should remember now look at this and tell me uh what do you think would be the answer to this one light chat okay so what do you think is the answer so there is weakness of the right arm weakness of the right uh, lower face and there is speech deficits the slow labored speech is there dysarthric speech is there the comprehension is good the repetition is poor when the repetition is poor the options that we have ruled out are your transcortical and transcortical that is gone next one conduction aphasia only repetition is abnormal here the patient has problem in expressing so this is motor aphasia that is broca's aphasia absolutely right this is broca's or motor aphasia next one what do you think is this one correct see first one you see that there is poor repetition so this is out this is out it's not transcortical and transcortical the repetition is normal the comprehension is good the speech is also fluent like both are normal the motor also and the sensory also so it is the conduction which is gone so this is conduction aphasia right this is conduction aphasia arcuate fasciculus okay next one which one is this
absolutely right this is sensory aphasia why because there is impaired repetition so this is not transcortical second the comprehension is impaired fluency is normal so only the comprehension the wernicke's is gone sensory aphasia is what it is in motor the fluency will also be affected the fluency will be affected right in conduction only repetition is gone fluency and comprehension are normal so this is sensory aphasia right so i hope all of you have got this how to solve this question the first thing look at repetition and then look at the rest of the things now the answer to this what aphasia is the single most common language disturbance seen in head trauma seen in metabolic encephalopathy and seen in alzheimer's disease is it broca's is it wernicke's is it conduction is it transcortical or is it anomic aphasia right absolutely right it is your anomic aphasia which is the single most common disturbance remember alzheimer's wagera mein naming is affected right metabolic the patient is not able to name so these are the types of aphasia let us go to that first table that we had seen so look at this one the various aphasias number one wernicke's right how is wernicke's repetition affected comprehension affected fluency is preserved or increased neologisms new words are seen in all the aphasias remember the naming is affected along with some other aphasias the only one where the only the naming is affected nothing else that is your anomic aphasia okay in broca's the comprehension is preserved your repetition is impaired all right also remember that your non fluent transcortical non fluent means motor or sensory non fluent transcortical aphasia means motor transcortical or sensory it is motor transcortical it is also called as anterior transcortical right because broca's is basically your frontal area which is located in the front that is anterior wernicke's is your temporal remember at the back so it is your posterior okay this is fluent or posterior okay now going to the next one in which aphasias the naming is preserved okay the naming is preserved the fluency is preserved what is happening is you have pure word deafness or you have pure alexia okay so basically there is word deafness the patient is not able to understand the words the comprehension is impaired only for the spoken language not for the written language only for the spoken ki deafness hai, that is only affected because the hearing is not normal that is why the patient cannot repeat as well pure alexia alexia mean problem with reading it's impaired only for reading because sunne mein koi problem nahi hai the repetition will be preserved right the repetition will be preserved remember that okay what is isolation aphasia look at the table and what is isolation aphasia where the comprehension is impaired okay the naming is impaired fluency is impaired everything is impaired but there is echolalia what aphasia is your isolation aphasia what kind of aphasia would this be comprehension gone fluency also gone repetition echolalia is present naming is also gone that is so basically the repetition is normal in the form of echolalia this is your transcortical mixed aphasia okay this is your transcortical mixed aphasia where both your uh, fluency is also gone the comprehension is also gone that is your transcortical mixed okay the transcortical mixed absolutely right okay so this was about the aphasias a quick review of the broadman areas that we saw in the beginning so this is the central sulcus posterior post central post that is the sensory so that is your sensory 312 primary sensation first 312 then comes the motor the primary motor cortex is 4 remember also motor we move with the four limbs so it is your area 4 primary motor is 4 uske aage you have pre motor that is your area 6 4 6 8 this is your frontal eye field 
right eye you write the number eight like this this looks like the eyes frontal eye feet okay the frontal eye feet here you have your 44 45 4 4 4 4 that's your broca's area superior temporal here you have 22 temporal temporal that's going to be your vernicase area that is the auditory association cortex which is the primary auditory cortex which is the primary auditory cortex it is 41 42 it is 41 42 what is 43 what is 43 so remember this 41 42 43 44 45 you can remember this as a story like let's say there's a new outlet which has opened uh you know a new food outlet which has opened nearby your area you stay in a hostel with your friend your friend just happened stumbled upon that new outlet saw a lot of rush there and thought let's taste it so that your friend tasted it came back to the room and said that it was very good like you should also go and taste so then you go and taste it and when you come back but surprisingly you did not like the food there and you give all the galis to your friend right so what is the sequence what are you doing first you are listening to the response the feedback that your friend is giving that is auditory next you go and taste the food next you come and give that is express all the galis that is basically your motor speech areas that is your broca's area right so 41 42 first is auditory 43 is your gustatory that is taste and 44 45 is the broca speech so first listen then taste and then speak up that is your 44 45 312 primary sensory 4 is your primary motor it is four limbs Six, four, six, eight, pre-motor, eight is your frontal eye field, right? Eight is your frontal eye field. 22, temporal, temporal, that's your vernicase, sensory speech area. 17, we see with S, S, 17, primary visual is 17. 18, 19 is visual association area, okay? So, yes, uh, these are your various uh, Broadman areas and that was uh, about the uh, various types of aphasias just remember transcortical repetition is preserved because Broca's arcuate, arcuate fasciculus vernicase are normal the repetition is normal in your conduction only the repetition is affected based on that you can solve many questions the one where only naming is affected it is anomic aphasia right so that was about the today's session on aphasia and the related the important broadman areas we will uh, have the next session today at 4 pm on the unacademy app the mnemonics uh, you know all the quick mnemonics here of fmt is what we are going to discuss in the 4 pm class today after that the next mnemonics crash course would be on 27th april all right so Today's PDF, I'll share it on the Telegram group after this class. Okay, Sartak, on the Telegram group, Dr. Nikita's RAT synapse is where I would share this PDF. So, see you all at 4 p.m. for a power-packed FMT mnemonic session at 4 p.m. Till then, goodbye, take care and keep studying, keep revising.